What is going on, Trash Talkers? We are back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Chicago Bears and giving you our season preview, including record predictions for the 2021 NFL season. All that and much more coming your way right now. Hey, Trash Talkers, it's Mike here. Over 93% of you who view our show each and every day are not subscribed to the channel. If you could hit that red subscribe button, it would help us out tremendously, and it is completely free for you guys. If you want to stay up to date with our daily content, then click that bell icon and you will be notified every time we go live. Nick and I both really appreciate you subscribing to the channel, and we can't wait to keep making more daily content for you. Nick, as we continue our series, we are on the NFC North today talking about the Chicago Bears. And listen, the Chicago Bears didn't make a whole hell of a lot of moves. They kind of stood pat. They didn't have a lot of draft picks to really work with. They didn't have a lot of free agency money to work with. So, you know, the Chicago Bears didn't do all that much, but some of what they did was very telling. So let's go through their signings and additions that really stood out to us. Uh, starting off with quarterback Andy Dalton, moving over to cornerback Desmond Trufant, and quarterback Justin Fields being selected in the first round of the NFL draft. Which one of these stood out to you the most? To me, Desmond Trufant was a really nice signing for them after, after releasing Kyle Fuller. They needed a replacement for him, a guy who could pick up where they left off. And to me, Desmond Trufant did not get a fair shake in Detroit last season. When Desmond Trufant stays healthy he is a really solid corner he proved that in, in Atlanta I think that this is where he rebounds his career and he should have a pretty nice time staying healthy because Chicago's secondary is one of the deepest and to me there should be a lot of pressure taken off of him and he should he should thrive in this role yeah so taking a look at the Chicago Bears obviously the most telling is Justin Fields the package that they traded with the New York Giants to select him at Num pick number 11 was absolutely telling of where they think this franchise is and that Justin Fields is the future. He is what they are going to be building upon. And when you take a look at how this roster is currently constructed, they've lost pieces on both offense and defense. They continue to not be able to attract key free agents. And there's, there's just a lot there for Chicago. Now with Justin Fields, I think a lot of that's going to change. Obviously they got a lot of flack for selecting Mitchell Trubisky when you had players like Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes still a, a, available and around when, when they were selecting. So at this point, I think the Chicago bears are very happy with where they are at the quarterback position. They do have Andy Dalton. They already said that he is the starter moving forward, but We'll see exactly how this all goes for the Chicago Bears, but uh, let's take a look at their losses, starting off with Kyle Fuller, who you mentioned, and quarterback Mitchell Trubisky. Which one of these losses stands out to you the most? To me, it's going to be Kyle Fuller. I mentioned Desmond Trufant was a nice addition, but that's only because they lost Kyle Fuller, and Desmond Trufant is no Kyle Fuller. What Kyle Fuller is able to do is he's one of the hardest-hitting corners in the NFL. He's really solid in both man and zone defense, and the hole that he's going to leave is bigger than just him on the field. He's one of the biggest leaders in the Chicago Bears locker room. He really helped guys like Eddie Jackson and Roquan Smith develop into leaders of their own on this defense as well so it's going to be interesting to see how this defense is able to work without a big leader like Kyle Fuller there this season yeah I mean Kyle Fuller absolutely comes to mind as the biggest loss but the loss of Mitchell Trubisky while not the biggest definitely stands out to me and that's just because with Justin Fields coming in and and taking over the reins you brought in Andy Dalton who in my opinion, is a worse version of what Mitchell Trubisky was. When Mitchell Trubisky was starting last year, he was winning games. He It didn't look pretty, and he definitely struggled a bit, but they were winning football games. They took him out. They thought Nick Foles could do better. Nick Foles absolutely fell flat on his face, 
and, and just was completely annihilated by opposing defenses. They bring back Mitch Trubisky and, you know, quarterbacks are fragile, man. I mean, when you take a look at their personas, the way they act, they, they need to be coddled a little bit. And Mitchell Trubisky did not like the fact that he was benched for Nick Foles and it showed in his play. I mean, he just did not look like he was the same player. And I think that's the biggest issue is that they were never completely sold on Mitchell Trubisky. So now losing him, you know, you're you're losing somebody that was entrenched in your system that you had spent time and developed. I think you're losing a lot in in that sense, but overall you're upgrading with Justin Fields and, and what he's gonna be able to do on the field. So it's kind of a good loss, but it's still a loss nonetheless. So let's move over and take a look at their record predictions. Let's take a look at their schedule and, and see how worth we think they're gonna do this season. All right, now let's take a look at the 2021 NFL schedule for the Chicago Bears. Starting week one, the Chicago Bears are on the road facing off against the Los Angeles Rams, and that is a very tough matchup coming out of the gates. You have Matthew Stafford, the prized new quarterback in Los Angeles, coming into SoFi Stadium. It's going to be packed. It's the first time fans are going to be able to be in this stadium, and I think that the Rams are absolutely going to destroy the Chicago Bears. In fact, I don't think this is going to be close from the get-go. I think that the Rams are going to be able to put pressure on the Bears early, and they're going to make life hell for Andy Dalton. And then in week two, the Chicago Bears are at home for the first time facing the Cincinnati Bengals, in which should be a much better matchup for them, but to me, the Cincinnati Bengals improved tremendously this offseason. Joe Burrow is back under center once again, and this is going to be tough for Andy Dalton. To me, the Bengals offense is going to have a pretty easy time with the Bears secondary, even though they're pretty strong. To me, the Bengals wide receivers are some of the best in the NFL, and the Bears offensive weapons are just not enough to get past even the Bengals defense. To me, the Bengals will take it in week two. Starting off 0-2 on the season, the Chicago Bears go on the road to visit the Cleveland Browns, one of the most vaunted teams in the NFL. With the massive improvements that they made through free agency and through the draft this season, the Browns are a team to be reckoned with, and this is not going to be a close game again. The, Chica the Chicago Bears have no chance here. I think that the Cleveland Browns are going to give them absolute fits, and it's going to be a slobber knocker of a game moving forward, but the Browns are going to take this one very easily. And then moving into week four, the Detroit Lions face the Chicago Bears for the first time this season at Chicago. And it's going to be a very good matchup for Chicago. Detroit is going through more changes than the Chicago Bears this season. They have a new head coach, new quarterback, brand new wide receivers. And this defense is much worse than the Chicago Bears. Andy Dalton should look really excited towards this matchup because it'll be the first win the Chicago Bears get this season. Look at that. The Chicago Bears have a win on the board. Moving into week five, they go on the road once again to visit the Las Vegas Raiders. They're entering the black hole. And uh, I believe that the Bears have what it takes to take over against the Raiders. The Raiders offense is a little lackluster at times. I believe that they have the defensive line to stop Josh Jacobs. You still have Akeem Hicks. You still have Khalil Mack. You still have these guys on the roster. I believe that the Bears have their hands full with the Raiders, but they're going to be able to win a close matchup here. And then moving into week six, the Green Bay Packers make their way to Chicago for the first time. And even if Jordan Love is the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, they're still a better team than Chicago Bears. This offense with Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones is going to be a little too much for Chicago to handle. The offensive line for the Packers has pretty much stayed the same besides their center. And so I think the offense will be able to put up enough points and the Packers defense will be able to hold back Allen Robinson enough to keep the Packers on top in week six. It just seems like the Bears are back and forth, home away, home away, home away. But again, they are back on the road. The Bears are on the road against the defending Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking a taking a game against Tom Brady, Mike Evans, and this vaunted team, I believe that the Bears are in way over their head. And this may end up being one of the last straws for the Chicago Bears as they get Justin Fields ready to take over. Still Andy Dalton, not Justin Fields just yet, and the Buccaneers are absolutely going to put a pounding on the Chicago Bears. 
Then moving into week eight, the 49ers go to Chicago to face the Bears. And it's going to be a tough matchup for Chicago. The Even though the 49ers don't have a lot of wide receiver depth, I think that the 49ers will still have a nice time scoring. The The running back depth that the 49ers have is still pretty deep, and I think they're going to rely heavy on that. The 49ers have one of, if not the best offensive lines in the NFL, and that's going to be very tough for Akeem Hicks and Cleo Mack to get pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo or Trey Lance. And the 49ers pass rush should have a pretty easy time with the Chicago Bears offensive line, which got rid of Charles Leno after getting Tevin Jenkins in the draft, which was a surprising move. The 49ers will win in week eight. All right, moving on to week nine, the Chicago Bears go to Pittsburgh again, another road game, but the Bears are looking forward to their bye week and they're going to look right past the Steelers because the Steelers are going to absolutely dominate them. They still have big Ben. They still have chase Claypool. They still have all these guys that are going to be on the offensive side of the ball. They're going to put up a mass amount of points on this secondary. And then on the flip side, I'm not sure how the offense of the Chicago bears is going to be able to put up points against this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. I think TJ Watts going to have a really strong day here. I look for the Steelers defense defense to have a really good time on Monday Night Football. It's a replay of uh, of the Super Bowl between these two, and the Steelers are going to come out on top in Week 9. And then in Week 10, the Chicago Bears have their bye week, but it only gets harder out of the bye because in Week 11, the Baltimore Ravens make their way to Chicago. And with this Baltimore Ravens offense, Lamar Jackson now has a ton of weapons to work with, and this defense for the Ravens is very solid. It's going to be tough for Andy Dalton or Justin Fields, it doesn't matter. The Baltimore Ravens will be able to get the better of Chicago in Week 11. Yeah, coming off that loss to the Ravens, they're sitting at 2-8 and eight and things are not looking pretty. The Bears go on the road once again to Detroit on a short week. And facing off against the Lions, the Lions have significant upside for the players that they have. Jared Goff is still an accomplished quarterback in this league. They still have some some key weapons on the offensive side of the ball. And on defense, they're still getting better. I believe that the Lions are going to win this game in a very close matchup. Then moving into week 13, the vaunted Arizona Cardinals make their way to the Chicago Bears, and it's going to be a nightmare matchup for the Chicago Bears. The Arizona Cardinals have such a stellar roster as it looks, and they're going to have such great pressure on Justin Fields in this matchup. Arizona's wide receivers, DeAndre Hopkins, A.J. Green, they're going to take advantage of this secondary. And in Week 13, the Arizona Cardinals should be able to have a breeze against the Chicago Bears. Moving into week 14, the Chicago Bears are on the road once again against the Green Bay Packers, their division rival. This is the Packers without Aaron Rodgers once again, and we're taking a look at these teams. This is going to be a matchup that's a lot closer than people expect, but I am taking the Packers in this one. Yet another loss for the Chicago Bears. We are in full rebuild mode with the Bears at this point, and there is a lot of improvement here for the Bears that they need, but the Packers are just going to edge them out week 14 just a little bit. In week 15, the Minnesota Vikings face the Chicago Bears in Chicago for the first time this season, and I think the Bears have what it takes to get the better of the Vikings here. To me, when you look at these matchups, divisional matchups are very tough, and Justin Fields is something brand new to Mike Zimmer and this coaching staff, and they're going to be troubled by the way he moves in the pocket, the way he's able to stretch plays, and the way he's able to work by this point with his wide receivers, and the Chicago Bears should have a nice time time and get their third win of the season against the Minnesota Vikings. In week 16, the Chicago Bears come off of a, an impressive win against the Minnesota Vikings, and they go on the road to face the Seattle Seahawks, and Chicago Bears, I think, will come out on top. I think Justin Fields is going to provide fits for this defense in Seattle that is abysmal. While this is his first look at the 12th man and exactly what that means, I do believe that the Seahawks defense is not going to be able to keep up with Justin Fields and Allen Robinson in this offense. Look for the Chicago Bears to win in week 16. 
Then moving in week 17, the Chicago Bears are on a two-game win streak, but it doesn't last for long as this nasty Giants offense makes their way to Chicago, and it's going to be even harder than any other matchup for them to stop this offensive power. Saquon Barkley and Kenny Galladay are really going to be big weapons against Chicago. It's going to be very tough to stop the Giants from scoring often in this one, and the Chicago Bears just won't be able to keep up against this Giants team. Then finally in week 18, we have the Chicago Bears going on the road against the Minnesota Vikings. And the Vikings struggled in the first matchup just in week 15, but I believe that they are going to be able to handle their business. The Vikings are in a position where they should be able to vie for the division title. This is going to be a key game for them to solidify that. And at at this point, the Vikings need to close out the season more than the bears do justin fields is going to continue to get reps continue to get different looks but at the end of the day the vikings will win this game closing out the chicago bears season and with a record of four and 13 it doesn't look too pretty but at the end of the day it's a quarterback change in the middle of the season justin fields has to get used to the weapons he probably wasn't taking first team reps in the first half of the season so he's got to learn all that chemistry with the offensive line the receivers the running backs he's got to learn the cadence and this defense has a little bit of issues after releasing kyle fuller You've got to, you know, figure out how you're going to keep the secondary strong, how the interior of the defensive line is going to be able to stop the run. To me, that's one of their bigger weaknesses on the defense. I think the the giant. I think that the Bears have their work cut out for them, but it, it's going to be a slow rebuild for Chicago. All right. Well, that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.